Welcome church to our online experience. We're so excited that we get to worship along with you and start this week by hearing from God's word and worshiping in his presence. Before we get started with our service, we would love to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. I do know like we are living in times where we just can't go out, we can't celebrate with our fathers or probably with our uh with as a family together. We're probably just struggling being confined in those it's 3 months plus. and a lot of us must be going through a lot of emotions but even as we enter this service can we commit our emotions our spiritual state our emotional state into god's hands and even before we step in uh, to worship god together i would love to read and encourage us from psalm 112 reading from psalm 112 it goes on to say praise the lord how joyful are those who hear the lord and delight in obeying his commands Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy, and their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. God comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless. They can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slink away their hopes thwart. I love this verse in verse 4 it says light shines in the darkness for the godly they are generous compassionate and righteous so even as we step into a time of worship can we be generous with our worship towards god can we be passionate so that god loves our passionate heart when we worship him in spirit and truth can we lay aside everything that we've been burdened by this whole week at the foot of the cross remember we worship a god who's already won who's already is victorious who's already given us the freedom that we need when we call on his name we can experience that and our prayer is that even as we worship the holy spirit will fall afresh on us let's continue to lift our hands and worship god for who he is
put your hands together just like this. We're in this together. We're going to sing this because it's true. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, even as we sang the song, Lord, we just lift you up, Lord Jesus. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you are God and Savior over our lives. I pray even right now, Lord Jesus, that Lord, as a church, we lift our hands, Lord. We enthrone you above everything, Lord. We enthrone you. We enthrone you over our cities. We enthrone you over our nations, Lord Jesus. We enthrone you and declare that you are God and Lord over all the earth, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in which the scripture says, Lord Jesus, the heavens are right above, Lord Jesus, and the earth is your footstool. You are seated in the heavens. And we pray that, Lord, this magnificent God, Lord Jesus, is in control of everything. Lord, even as we raise the following prayer request, Lord Jesus, as a church, we believe, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, even as we intercede, that you are interceding on our behalf to the Father. And we pray that, Lord, you would come through, Lord Jesus, you would come through. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you've kept us safe till now. You've kept us in good health. And we remember, Lord Jesus, all those who've, Lord, gone before us, Lord Jesus, who are struggling in health, who are struggling, Lord Jesus, with this pandemic virus, Lord Jesus. And we just pray right now, Lord, that they'll be set free. We pray, Lord, for our entire nation, Lord Jesus, which the numbers are being increasing day after day, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the top 12 cities, Lord Jesus, where the infection rate is so high, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord, for the intense lockdown that we are in as a city, Lord. We can't do anything, but we can just commit everything into your hands. We don't know what to do, Lord Jesus. As humanity, we don't know what to say, what to do, what not to do. We are so caught, Lord Jesus. And we believe, Lord, that only you can take control. I pray especially right now, Lord, for all those who are in the forefront, Lord, who are working so hard, Lord Jesus, to keep everyone else safe, who are working in the hospitals, Lord Jesus. We pray for the police force, Lord, who are manning the city, Lord Jesus, and making sure, Lord, the spread doesn't happen. We pray, Lord, for all those essential workers. We pray that there'll be a divine protection over them, Lord, a divine protection over them even as they go back home, a divine protection over their families right now, Lord. We pray, Lord, for all those who are admitted in hospitals, Lord. We've already lost so many of our friends, Lord Jesus, to this virus. We pray that, Lord, that we will lose no more, Lord. We pray that, Lord, we'll have no death at all, Lord Jesus, happening. Please, Lord Jesus, we, Lord, we plead, Lord Jesus, for our nation, Lord. We plead for our city right now that you would save these lives, Lord Jesus. 
I pray that Lord, we pray that against every form of corruption that's there, Lord. We pray over every form of Lord Jesus um, uh, wrongdoing that's happening, Lord Jesus. People who are extorting and exploiting people right now. We pray, Lord, let your justice come, Lord. Let your justice prevail, Lord, right now, Lord. We pray even for all those, Lord Jesus, who are, Lord, confined within the four walls, Lord Jesus. For those who have been separated from their families, who are unable to go and meet with anyone, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, they'll have your health and your strength with them, Lord Jesus. I pray right now, Lord, for all those who are watching, Lord, right now. And even as we are praying and lifting our hands, we pray, Lord, for the emotional state of many, Lord. We know, Lord Jesus, as many of the stats that we keep reading, Lord Jesus, a lot of them are suffering from depression, Lord, and we pray against depression right now. I pray even right now, Lord, that you would give purpose, Lord Jesus, for each and every one, Lord, that they wouldn't be, Lord, uh, sunk into a place, Lord, worrying about what tomorrow might come, Lord Jesus, or what tomorrow holds, but they'll have purpose and they'll have faith and trust knowing that you'll take care, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We pray, Lord, for the governing authorities, Lord, that they'll have strength and wisdom from above, Lord Jesus, Lord, to guide and lead your people well. We believe and trust that you are the one who seated all of them in positions of authority. And we pray for them, Lord, that, Lord, you would give them wisdom from above, Lord. Wisdom from above. We even pray, Lord, for our nation, Lord, right now. We pray, Lord, for peace across our borders, Lord Jesus. We pray especially for this rising tension that's there, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, for peace, Lord, across our borders. We pray, Lord, for the soldiers that we've lost, Lord. We pray for their families that they'll be comforted, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, even as talks happen, Lord, that there'll be no escalations, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the survivors, Lord Jesus, who are caught at the enemy camp, Lord Jesus, that they'll be set free, Lord Jesus. We pray that, Lord, we as a nation will experience peace, Lord. We pray for the economy of our country, Lord Jesus. Lord, with the pandemic and with the, Lord, unrest in our uh, borders, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that the economy won't crash, Lord Jesus. That you will hold the economy, Lord, we thank you. I pray even right now, Lord Jesus, for every other uh, institution that's working, Lord, right now. We pray, Lord, for the schools, for the colleges, Lord Jesus, which are struggling to, Lord, cater to the whole online thing, that, Lord, they'll have favor and strength, Lord. We pray for all the children, Lord Jesus, that there'll be equality, Lord Jesus. We pray for those in government schools, those in public and private, Lord, that they'll all be able to experience education, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that, Lord, we, as your people, Lord, will not go into the zone of being selfish, Lord, where we are just self-preservation and Lord that we will be able to Lord read your word and be living out Lord what you've called us to live out that we'll be generous Lord in every way possible Lord I pray that Lord we'll be generous with our prayers we'll be generous Lord Jesus with all that we do with all that we say Lord we thank you I pray for families right now Lord who are going through tough times I pray for those who've lost jobs Lord right now those who are confused I pray Lord for those who are struggling financially Lord Jesus who are unable to make ends meet that Lord you will be their provider Lord Jesus I pray for those who are sincerely looking for jobs, Lord Jesus, that open doors will happen, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, doors and opportunities will come, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We pray for those, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those who are struggling with health issues, Lord, right now, Lord. I pray, Lord, for physical ailments, Lord, that healing will come upon your children, Lord. We believe, Lord Jesus, the cross has the final word. I pray especially against cancer, Lord. I pray against, Lord, debilitating diseases right now, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, your children are suffering from, that they would have the faith, they would have hope and strength in you. And more than anything, Lord Jesus, the blood that heals, Lord Jesus, will fall on them, Lord, right now and give them healing. A supernatural healing will happen, which will be a testimony, Lord Jesus, that our God lives, that our God still heals, Lord, we thank you. We pray, Lord, that, Lord, even as we step into this week, Lord Jesus, of uncertainty, we rest and abide, Lord Jesus, in the words that your word says, Lord Jesus, that you will go before us, Lord Jesus. You will go behind us, Lord, that we'll be protected in everything, Lord, that we won't be scared. Our faith will only be strengthened, Lord Jesus. And even as we sing this song, we just declare, Lord Jesus, that you would go before us, Lord. You would take charge, Lord Jesus. We give everything to you, Lord. May you be glorified and honored.
because it's true. Let it be so for your people, your blessing, your favor, your protection to rest on us right now. We trust you, God, with full confidence, knowing that you go before us, behind us, beside us. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence. In your name we pray. Everyone said, amen. We have a few things happening in the life of the church. We have a Zoom call every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. for children. If you have children below the age of 12, they are welcome to join us. We meet on Zoom this Wednesday for prayer and communion. You can DM us on the following number for more details. We hope you can join us and be blessed. If you need prayer or just someone to speak with, please contact us. Our details are on the screen. We would love to get in touch with you. Seeking God every day is necessary in order for us to thrive and be transformed. We as a church have published a few Bible plans on the YouVersion Bible app. All you have to do is download the app and search for We Are Zion Chennai on it. You can do the plans alone or with friends. Our desire is that through doing these plans, you will develop a deep love for God and His Word. If you struggle to stay disciplined in your reading of the Bible regularly, we would love to do a plan with you and help you develop this life-changing discipline. Even before we go into the Word of God, the world today celebrates Father's Day. And we as a church would love to honor and tell all our fathers out there, we love you. Happy Father's Day. We've made a short video and we would love for you all to watch this and be encouraged. And remember that God loves you. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Can I just take a moment to pray with you right now? Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we get to celebrate Father's Day. Lord, even as we saw in the video, Lord, many of us are probably in, the, in a place where we don't actually have a father. We've lost a father or we have had an absentee father. Some of us have had good fathers. Whatever our experience might be, Lord Jesus, the bottom line is we need you. And we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that Lord, we all look up to you and we ask you that, Lord, you would make yourself known in our lives, Lord Jesus. I pray every heartache, everything that's missing in our life, Lord Jesus, that we would have loved to have from a physical father. I pray that, Lord, you will take that space, Lord. I pray, Lord, for peace over families right now, Lord Jesus, who have not had a father. I pray, Lord, for strength for families, Lord, where they have actually not had a father who was strong, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, for those who have seen their father so strong and then have seen them weak and lost, that you'll be, they'll be comforted knowing that there's an eternal father above. More than anything, Lord Jesus, we pray that, Lord, we as fathers who are still in this role, Lord Jesus, that we'll be better fathers every day. We are weak vessels. I pray that, Lord, in the quietness when we may not admit to many others around us, that, Lord, we will admit it to you, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we need your strength, we need your help, and we need your grace, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would be with us. Even as we 
take each step and every day that we'll be better fathers out there for everyone around Lord Jesus. And I pray that we'll be able to lead our families well, Lord. I pray for those who are hurting that, Lord, you'll be the God of all comfort and you'll put your arms around them like a loving father and lead them along every step of the way. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, wishing you all a happy Father's Day. It's time to go into the Word of God. We're going to go into the fourth part of the series of The Wind. Even as we start uh, listening to God's Word, let's open our hearts and ask God, God, please come in and invade us. Show us that your words come alive and transform us inside out. Church, it's such a joy to be with you again. We continue our series on the wind and this week we're going to be looking at a different aspect of the wind. Last week we heard from Pastor Jeremy and how he shared to us about the violent wind. And this week we're going to be talking about how the wind, the Holy Spirit, is likened to a breath. Um, if any of you have struggled with anxiety, you will know this, that they tell you to focus most on your breathing. They tell you to be mindful of your inhales and your exhales. Uh, because apparently scientifically when you breathe in deeply, there is more oxygen going to all your cells. More importantly, your parasympathetic nervous system gets activated. So the, the brainstem, the part of the brainstem called the amygdala, which deals with your anxiety response, starts to relax and all those chemicals which are being released calm down. So that's the purpose of deep breathing. It's, it's about focused breathing. But today we're going to be looking at the Holy Spirit who is likened to the breath of fresh air, breath of life. We're going to be looking at that from the book of Ezekiel specifically. So I'd like you to turn uh, in your YouVersion Bible app, if you can go to the notes or in your Bible, if you can look at Ezekiel chapter 37. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Before we get into this, I just want to reiterate that the, the word for the Holy Spirit, Ruach, it actually means wind. It means spirit. It also means breath, which is why we thought it would be fitting for us to see why the Holy Spirit is likened to breath. This is what Jesus did interestingly in John chapter 20 verse 22 we see. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. But we know that after only about 40 days, the Holy Spirit came on onto the disciples on the day of Pentecost. But in this passage, it specifically says Jesus breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So with that in mind as our context, we're going to go get into Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 14. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This is what it says. A valley of dry bones. The Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living peoples again? O oh, Sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath. From the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. O my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. 
we're going to really emphasize on verse 14 today. We're going to be looking at that very closely. I will put my spirit in you. This is what God is saying through Ezekiel. And you will live again and return home to your own land. Today, when we liken the Holy Spirit to a breath, this is what I believe he wants to do in each of our lives. First of all, he wants us to live again. Now, you may be asking me, I'm alive. I have breath in my body. I'm sitting here listening to you. I'm very much alive. But are you truly alive? Are you really, really alive? The word live in this context, in, in, in verse 14, the, it's taken from the word kaya. Kaya actually means to refresh, to be rejuvenated, to be quickened, which means something that is alive, it doesn't just maintain it, it refreshes it, it makes it better. It brings more energy back into it. That's what this word means. And today I ask you the same question. Do you want to live again? Do you feel like you've just been going through the motions? Because especially during this season, all of us are confined to our, you know, tight spaces. We literally feel we're doing nine to nine duties at home with our, with our children or maybe with our work, with cooking and cleaning and everything else. We're just in this cycle. like It's like, you know, a monotonous hamster wheel. But I want to ask you this more than that, more than this season you're stuck in. Look at the whole period of maybe the past year. Have you really lived? Have you really, really lived? If we look at Romans chapter 8, verses 9 to 11, it explains what this life in Christ actually means. So I'm going to read, read you verses 9 to 11. Romans chapter 8, verses 9 to 11. He says this, But when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by the flesh, but by the Spirit. And if you are not joined to the Spirit of the Anointed One, you are not of Him. Now Christ lives His life in you, and even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, he will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. This is a much debated passage nowadays where people propagate maybe an immortality uh, doctrine or anything like that. But here's what it actually means. This is what it means. He's saying, all of us are aging. We're all headed towards death eventually. So our bodies are aging. You can feel it. You'll feel it in your bones, your skin. But the truth is when we have Jesus, he reinvigorates us from within. So as old as we are getting on the surface of it, within us, with Jesus in us, he's just changing us. He's taking us from glory to glory. We're getting to know him better. Attitudes are changing. Our character is evolving. We're getting better and better. That's what he's talking about. With Jesus in you, your life actually must get better. Your life actually must be better than it ever was. So what does this life mean to live again? If the Holy Spirit is saying, I want to come in, I want you to live again. What does he mean? So the same passage, I was reading it in the message translation and I had such powerful words. I urge you after this service is over, if you could just take some time, look at Romans 8 and the message version. You will be amazed at the words they have used to explain what this new life in Christ actually means. But truthfully, you know, if you if you boil it down to this, a life in Christ, to be alive and, you know, just bubbling with life, it means that you live in freedom. The message version talks about how the Holy Spirit comes in like a mighty wind and he frees you from the shackles of sin and death. That's what you're living in. You and I are living in a season where we're freed from the bondages of sin and death. God came and just restored us from, from all of that through Jesus. So we don't have to no longer live in the old paradigms of a victim mindset or thinking that everyone's out to get us. No, we are living free. We no longer have to live in a prison of our own making. We can also live this life alive if we live it on God's terms, not on ours. A lot of times I, I've noticed that I run my day based on what I want. But how many times have I have actually woken up and said, Lord, what do you want me for, to do for you today? How can I serve you better? Holy Spirit, lead me today. T tell me what to do. I hardly do that. But this life is really alive when we allow him to run our lives for us. When we give him complete access, complete control. When we say, you know what, we live it on your terms, Lord. And the message version, again, very lovely. He, in a very beautiful way, he explains this. He says, you no longer live a timid, grave-tending life. But you live a, a life which is adventurously expectant of God. Isn't that amazing? What a what word play? Adventurously expectant of God, which means you wake up every morning and this is what the message says. What's up, Papa? What do you want me to do? Do we live like that? Do we say every morning, Father, what do you want me to do today for you? Who can I help? Who can I bless? Who can I call and pray for? 
do we wake up just you know filled with life do we have this energy flowing through us because of the spirit in us another thing about being alive in christ is knowing who you are and who you are your identity is so secure you know he is your father you know you are his child the best thing about that is your identity is completely completely covered in the fact that you're a child of god you don't need any other label the labels of the past don't matter anymore your current label is child of god and that's all that matters and so you can say goodbye to your identity crisis you can say goodbye to your insecurities because hey this is who you are so when you are alive in christ when when the holy spirit has come in to give you new life you can live a life that is so expectant of what god is going to do right now he's going to tell you this is what i want you to do this is what i want you to talk this is who i want you to go out and meet these are the things that he will direct you to do it's a life where your identity is so secure so you have nothing that troubles you people could have labeled you as all kinds of things they could have said you know this is who you are based on your appearance based on your parentage hey but today he's saying no your identity is that you're my child i am your father and this life it's truly alive when you live in freedom no more shackles no more hiding in a grave of your own making i want to ask you what are the graves that you are hiding in today it could be a grave of shame it could be a grave of guilt it could be a grave of self condemnation it could be a grave of maybe anger of bitterness these are graves of our own making many times but god is saying hey i want the holy spirit to come in and resurrect those bones i want to bring life back into those dead parts of your life i know for a fact there have been parts in my life which were totally dead there were skeletons in the closet but the holy spirit had to come in he had to come in and breathe a fresh upon me a lot of people don't actually know a bit of my story which has evolved over the past few years but um when i was around 30 uh, 32 33 i started uh, struggling with a severe um, anxiety and panic attacks and i didn't know what was happening to me i thought maybe i was uh, probably having a mental breakdown of some sort um eventually i did realized that i needed help so um i got in touch with a counselor a christian counselor and started working with her and i discovered that i actually suffered a bit of childhood trauma as a child and uh, the childhood trauma was not the big focus what happened over the next 2 years of counseling was i was introduced to the holy spirit in a whole new realm the Christ- my counselor actually helped me look at the holy spirit as my ultimate healer my trauma didn't have a hold on me my anxiety could not have a hold on me the holy spirit came in through 2 years i was exposed to his healing power today when you if you ask me are you healed from your experiences i can definitively tell you i'm 100% healed because i experienced the holy spirit's power who came in there were bones in my life hidden bones bones of anger bitterness a uh, severe relationship breakdowns i didn't know how to have a regular relationship i had walls in my life the holy spirit came down with his battering ram of revelation he broke down things that had to be broken down he resurrected bones that had just you know been long unused and he's brought me into a place a spacious place a place of healing a place where i can help others a place of complete empathy when if someone tells me they've been through something i don't think i'll ever look down on them i don't think i'll ever judge them because i walked that i know what it's like so this is what my word to you is if the holy spirit can come in he he breathed a fresh on me he brought me out of the grave i had put myself in he brought me out he restored me i truly live now every day for me is a joy because i know that god has done so much for me if he can do this for me he can do it for you he can bring life where there is death where there is a stench of death where there is bones that are rotting and dry he can bring back life he can put breath in it he can bring you back out of that grave to live fully until your time on earth is done that is my desire for each of you as you listen to this that you will allow the same holy spirit to breathe a fresh upon you the second thing i believe that the holy spirit wants to do in our lives today is he wants to give us rest how many of you can honestly say you need rest if we look at ezekiel chapter 37 verse 14 he talks about how i will put my spirit in you i will make you live and i will settle you in your land the word settle yonak actually means rest It was used in connotation to the Israelites settling in the promised land. That's where the word was derived from. So if you look at it today, all of us need rest. It's funny because our three children have been on online classes this whole week for 2 weeks now and um our youngest just has about half an hour every day. That's about it. They don't want them to have too much screen time. 
but you should see the drama he does after he finishes that half an hour he will lie down on the floor or on the bed and he will just rest and he will yawn and he will stretch and you see he's so tired and the other two who are still on their classes will look at him with such exasperation meaning to say you did nothing what are you so tired about every one of us need rest from the most busy to the people who have the most time on their hands we all need rest and this it means it's not just a physical laying down kind of rest it's an emotional rest it's a spiritual rest you know rest is such a wholesome thing it doesn't just involve us lying down it means resting on all levels when god created the earth 6 days of active creative work seventh day it says god rested if god needed to rest if the creator of the universe the heavens and the earth and everything we see moving around us today if he needed to rest how much do we need to rest it gives us a lot of food for thought i'm going to look at hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 from the amplified and also verse 12 if you can just follow along with me just to get an idea of what this rest actually means the believers rest therefore while the promise of entering his rest still remains and is freely offered today let us fear in case any one of you may seem to come short of reaching it or think he has come too late for indeed we have had the good news of salvation preached to us just as the israelites also when the good news of the promised land came to them but the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not united with faith in god by those who heard for we who believe that is we who personally trust and confidently rely on god enter that rest so we have his inner peace now because we are confident in our salvation and assured of his power just as he has said as i swore an oath in my wrath they shall not enter my rest this he said although his works were completed from the foundation of the world waiting for all who would believe verse 12 for the word of god is living and active full of power making it operative energizing and effective it is sharper than any two edged sword penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit the completeness of a person and of both joints and marrows the deepest parts of our nature exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart to give you a bit of a historical perspective on hebrews 11 what happened was the israelites left egypt after 400 years of slavery they were being brought out and god had promised them through moses that they would reach the promised land and that was their state of rest he said i will take you there and give you rest from all your enemies so moses dies just outside the promised land but joshua takes over but what happened in those 40 years was that there was an entire generation of people who were the elders of the camp they were so unbelieving so hard hearted they indulged in idolatry they they turned away from god they grumbled they complained that god said they will never see my rest and so he made the israelites wander for 40 years in the wilderness until that generation died they all were wiped out and after that the new generation was led by joshua into the promised land and so that first generation did not see rest the next generation came and joshua led them to conquer territory they were established in their cities and eventually just as joshua predicted they forgot god they 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 bypassed all his laws they didn't stick to the word of god uh, they disobeyed blatantly they they indulged in idolatry and eventually they were given over to enemies as you know ezekiel and other prophets wrote during the time of exile which was further down their timeline when they completely abandoned faith in god they went off the rails until god gave them over to the babylonians and they were in exile for 70 years so if you look at it there's been a series of disobedient uh, behavior there was a lot of rebellion there was an absolute lack of confidence in god which led to them never having their rest the rest that was promised to them they never actually enjoyed it but today in hebrews 4 what he's talking about is today that rest is available to you he says which means each of us as we read this we are entitled to that rest we get to claim that rest for ourselves but what are the conditions to have that rest how do we actually step into that rest one thing is we have to have a faith in god which is unshakable faith in this place he actually talks about a confident reliance on god complete reliance on him knowing that no matter what god you have got this you have gone before you have done it before you will do it again so we can really rest when we confidently trust and rely on god 
it's not this uh, hard heartedness we're saying you know what lord you might disappoint me so i'll keep my expectations low it's not this whole uh, double minded thing where you may let me down you may work i'll be happy either way because i've kept my expectations so low no this is a complete whole hearted trust in him when you have that kind of trust he says you will experience the rest that i give you the next way of experiencing this rest is when our faith you know our belief that god will act for us is coupled with the energy that comes from his word that's why i was reading from verse 12 which says the word of god is active and it's energizing and it, it's so powerful it dis- distinguishes between joints and marrow if you look at it literally that they are not indistinguishable they completely fused but look at that he says it's that powerful and so if our faith doesn't have the word of god as its bedrock it's going to be shaky faith It's like this I can live all the live long day with my children but if I don't communicate with them they're not going to believe that I love them they're not going to believe that I I have certain things that I have you know as expectations of them God he may be invisible but the word of God is his visible proof is the proof that he exists is the proof of his love for me if I don't live my life based on the word of God my faith in him is going to be shaky so if you and I don't have our faith rooted in the word of God we're never going to experience rest we're never going to find that kind of peace that comes from god that he has promised us we need to be focused on knowing god's word intimately this if anything in our church we're going to keep reiterating sunday after sunday it's this each of us need to know the word of god we live in a season when we have a lot of time on our hands even those of us who work long hours in between conference calls you can take your u version bible app you can sit and read the word of god you have the audio bible you have uh, bibles which you can journal on find out what works for you we have no excuses we don't have any excuse at this point of time to not know the word of god we need it more than ever so if i i urge you if you want to experience rest if you're saying i'm constantly in a state of unrest i feel fluttery inside i feel like i'm not settled yet my challenge to you is that you get into the word of god first and then through the word of god he will give you promises that you can hold on to and through those promises you will experience a complete reliance complete confidence in who god is nikki gumbel says this he says when you the people of god live under the word of god you discover the spirit of god increasing your experience of the presence of god that's how important the word of god is if you want to experience the holy spirit's breath today you want to see him fill your life you need to first fill yourself with the word of god there's no other way you'll experience the presence of god i still remember in 2013 when the holy spirit gave me the burden for um reaching out to children and and women who had been abused i i didn't know what i had to do but i knew this that god had given me a word but that was the first time i was hearing this particular word this it was an obscure passage from second samuel which jumped off the page at me so i noted it down and i and i have even written there lord i think you're speaking to me about my calling um but i didn't know whether god had really spoken to me or whether i just was intrigued by the passage so um the whole week went by that sunday i was in the us at the time with my family and that sunday as always i i facetimed with my parents uh, back in chennai and we were just chatting i was talking to my dad and mom and then i told them uh, this is what god has shown me and i just don't know if it's if it's really god who spoke to me and my dad said tell me what passage god spoke to you from and so i quoted this verse at him and my father was in shock for half a minute and i said what happened and he said you will not believe but today i was at church and uh, my so my father went on to tell me what happened he was at church that day he had finished the english service upstairs he had come down he was waiting for my mother in the foyer of the tamil service when the tamil service pastor was actually preaching from this very same passage and the verse that i read out was the verse he emphasized upon as well and so my father had stood there for the 5 minutes listening to this and thinking oh my gosh i such an obscure verse i've never heard of it preached in this way and that was the exact verse that i brought up with him that night and so he told me my father told me you know what i think that was god speaking to you because he spoke to me as well i didn't know that he had spoken to you but i i think that god is with you go for it do what god has asked you to do and that day was when i had a complete rest in my spirit about what my calling was you saw how the word of god coupled with our faith gives us rest if it was not for that confirmation i may still have doubts about my calling but it was so clear to me that it was god who had called me and that it was god who was going to carry me through today i want to ask you this do you need 
a fresh breath of life upon you do you need to come back to life do you feel like you've just been literally going through the motions of life doing your job doing the things expected of you but nothing more nothing less i want to ask you if you will invite the holy spirit in to breathe a fresh upon you that he will with his mighty violent wind blow through your life remove everything that is not of him resurrect those bones put back muscle into the things that you want to do give you a fresh and renewed will for things maybe you're saying i'm completely tired and worn out i'm exhausted the pressures of life are so heavy on me i need rest can i urge you to get into the word of god today that you will allow god he's done everything already the the job is done salvation has already been won for you it's a finished work you just have to walk in the knowledge of that completion knowing that he's got you you've got everything going for you all you need to do is walk in confident trust knowing that he has got this and will you base that trust on the word of god today i'm going to pray for you at the end of this asking that the holy spirit breathes a fresh upon you but if you're saying today i don't even know jesus how will i experience the holy spirit can i tell you who jesus is jesus is the son of god he was sent to earth for each one of us because we are such sinners that we cannot save ourselves on our own we need jesus to save us so god sent him down he died on our behalf as a perfect sacrifice and he didn't just leave it there he he was then resurrected from the dead he today lives at the right hand of god the father and in his resurrection he gave you and me complete freedom from our sinful lives he gave us freedom from all that held us back today you and i can operate with that kind of power because of him living again If you need Jesus in your life, if you want him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, can you repeat this prayer after me? I can assure you that your life will never be the same again. If he could resurrect the bones of my life, if he could restore me, if he could do amazing things with me, a broken vessel, he can do the same for you. He can do much more for you. Can I pray with you? Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you love me so much. even though i am the worst of sinners i repent of everything that i have ever done wrong and i ask that you forgive me i ask that you will be the lord and savior of my life i ask that you will be make me a child of god i love you i thank you in jesus mighty name i pray amen amen if you need the holy spirit right now can you just raise up your hands in your living room in your bedroom wherever you're seated can you just raise up your hands and say come holy spirit i need you i need you fresh breath of heaven i need you come and blow your beautiful breeze in my life take away everything that's not of you fill me with renewed life may my identity be secure in you may i live in freedom may i operate on your agenda not mine may i live a life that is adventure is a god adventure no longer graveside tending no longer living a timid shy and an and embarrassed life but lord i want to go out there i want to put myself out there i want to tell people of what you've done for me bring me out of the grave i'm in holy spirit i pray that you will breathe a fresh upon each one of us as we watch this lord that every part of us every hidden dark broken part you will come and mend lord because you love us too much to leave us the way we are and i pray that you will heal people at this very moment heal them of childhood bruises heal them lord of of relationship breakdowns heal them lord because of the things they have suffered at the hands of others restore them to you o oh father restore them o oh father god rebuild them renew them refresh them i pray lord for a fresh urgency to pray upon your people i pray lord that people will yearn and long for your word and that lord each of us would soak in your word we will meditate in it till lord it oozes out of us that the word of god will be on our lips at all times we love you and we thank you o oh father holy spirit i ask again that you would come that you will have your way in us that you will cleanse us o oh father from top to toe in jesus name i pray amen amen down my life I'm giving up control never looking back oh I surrender all I'm living for your glory 
we own the earth. This passion in my heart, this stirring in my soul, see the nations bow for all the world and all. I'm living for your glory on the earth for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me light a flame in my soul for we eye to see for the sake of the world burn like fire in me fire in me for every need to bow down Burn like a fire in me For every tongue to confess You alone are the king You are the hope of the earth For the sake of the world Burn like a fire in me And light a flame in my soul For every eye to see For the sake of the world like a fire in me, like a fire in me. Even as we close this service, let's step into this week knowing that God is with us, He's in us, and He's for us. I pray that God will use you mightily in every little thing that you do, that He'll use you as a testimony, that He'll use your words to bring hope and life to the people around you. May the love of the Father the grace of His only Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. Go in peace and God bless you all. Remember, whoever finds Jesus finds life.